Hi everyone and welcome to another tutorial. Today I'm going to do a thank you box card that fits three Girardelli chocolate squares. And as always, all the materials will be linked in the description down below, but also there will be a schema and all the measurements for this on my blog, which also are linked down below. But let's get crafting. So to start with, I am going to cut down all my cardstock. The first cardstock is Summer Splash by My Favorite Things. I cut the first piece to five and a half by eight and a half. And the second piece, which is the box, is cut at seven by three and a half. The next step is to cut down the vellum, which is going to be a shaker pocket. And that I cut to four and three quarters by six and a quarter. I'm also going to do matting and pattern papers, so I start with my mats. For the front, I'm going to cover it completely, so that measures four and five and a half. And on the inside, I decided to um, add that slightly splash, uh, summer splash as a border. So those pieces are cut to uh, one and seven eighths by five and three eighths. Then I'm, I'm cutting down the pattern paper and again I'm cutting down everything one eighth smaller. So the first piece is a three and seven eighths by five and three eighths. Um, and then I'm going to do the two inner pieces which is going to be one and three quarters by five and a quarter uh, to fit perfectly in those mats. The last thing to cut is a sentiment strip that I'm going to have on the inside and that strip is going to be cut to um, three quarters of an inch by two inches. For scoring, I'm going to score the summer splash at four inches, turn around the cardstock and score it again at four inches, giving it a uh, half an inch spine and the uh, ended card will measure four by five and a half. For the box, I'm gonna score it at three eighths of an inch and three, qu uh, three quarters of an inch. This will give me a tab that is uh, three eighths of an inch and then a depth on the box that is three eighths of an inch. And I do that on all four sides. As this is cardstock, I also press pretty firmly when I do my score lines so that I really have them there. Then I'm going to work with the vellum where I'm much, much more careful. The first four score lines is at three eighths of an inch. And by the way, you can actually cut down the vellum about three eighths shorter and not score it on one of the sides as I will cut away one of those score lines. Then I go in and score it at the middle, middle, which is at three and one eighth uh, on the side where you have a tab. So then I'm going to cut down the vellum with just my scissors. I first cut down the edges, um, the complete remove all of the tabs on one of the sides because that side uh, is going to uh, be folded on the inside. You're gonna see uh, when we put this together. And then I make tabs on all the sides. I did uh, cut away the upper uh, tab also, so it's that dimension. Again, there is a schema that will show you how to um, do this. Then I'm gonna make little tabs and uh, kind of a, um, kind of the upper, uh, fold for the box so that you can um, close it down again if you want to do that uh, open and close it so the top of the box will not be um, uh, closed uh, glued down uh, however the bottom will be glued down so that i uh, don't have to worry about the chocolate falling out <laughs> Uh, I did remember uh, after I started cutting that I should burnish all the edges. It's much easier to burnish, burnish the, the little uh, folds 
before you cut. So that is what I did. Uh, in this, uh, this is when I start working and I realize here that I cut wrong. So I decided in the end to not having any tabs on one of the sides. And this is going to be the side wh which I glue down or tape down because I use tape. Um, I'm sitting here and saying, like, should I have the tab? Should I? N nah, I removed it in the end. For the front, the sentiment on the front, I'm going to put that on top of my vellum. I add some of this, um, my embossing tool powder. This is to remove statics and stuff so that the uh, embossing powder doesn't get stuck in the vellum. I'm using this thank you stamp by my favorite things. Again, it's in the um, description down below. Um, if it still exists, I think this is, um, uh, I, I'm going to see if I can find the similar one. I think this is retired. It's an old one. Uh, I use some Versamark ink and then I'm using some Hero Arts uh, fine embossing powder, which is my favorite white embossing powder. And I do that, as you see, on the side where I have the folds. And you want to see the, why I put it where I put it. Then I heat emboss it and the sentiment is done for my little shaker pocket. Then I'm putting together my little mixture of uh, sequins. And I, I have a bunch of different sequins. I think this I found in a store somewhere. And I just put a little simple and it's only sequins in this because I want them to be as flat as possible as the vellum pocket is flat. I then uh, tape together the layers for the front and it's around this that I am going to go in with my little vellum pocket. So I fold this together. Um, and I burnish all the edges because I had forgotten to do that on this too. <laughs> um, and then I put the, the, the sequence in and I, I shouldn't have because I remember then I'm, I need some tape. And yes, I'm using some sock one tape to make sure that everything sticks together perfectly. Uh, sock one tape is a little bit stickier. This tab will not be shown. I'm going to show you how I put it together soon, but they won't be shown. So uh, you can use whatever tape that you rely on. Uh, that you feel comfortable with. Um, sock one tape for me is the absolute best. I make envelopes with this tape and then send it in the mail without worrying. So then I'm going to make the pocket. I fold it together and then I put the front of the card upside down on top of it. I take the little tape pieces and tape it in place on the back side of that. So this, the back side of the little tabs will never be shown because I am then gonna tape this uh, at the top of the box. And as you see, it shakes quite nicely. Uh, and I decided not to tape it, tape it down in the front because it doesn't need it. Um, it's just as easy to just use it. I add some just regular tape runner. I use the funky tape runner for all my gluing needs. Um, and then I just mat it on top of that and uh, you have a front of the card. For the next step, I am going to put the box together. Again, I'm using my sock one tape. Uh, I think this is a quarter inch tape. So it's a little bit thinner than my flaps which makes it a little bit easier. Here was I decided to remove that last tab and I also mitered it a little bit more because um, it's gonna add together on the inside and then you will have, want a pretty good miter um, on that little tab. And then I put together my little um, pattern paper layer um, you're gonna see here, I actually measured this wrong. I actually measured that two inches. So I'm going in and just uh, removing one eighth so that it is the correct width and I get that perfect layer. Um, I'm very careful when I layer. This whole video is like almost two times the speed because it makes it a little bit easier for you to see and not get bored. I work pretty slow when I do things 
just so that I get them all lined up the way I want. For the sentiment on the inside, I'm gonna uh, use the your you're a limited edition and I use the coordinating ink uh, summer splash from my favorite things um, the first stamp didn't do very well because I hadn't stamped with this stamp before so I just turned it around and got a um, better way I put it down and then I realize here when I'm gonna put it on that maybe I don't want to glue down the tab at the top. Um, this is when I realize that it's almost upside down. So I carefully, carefully peel it off. You have a little bit of time to be able to peel off things when you have the funky tape runner. And then you can just uh, push it down really, really hard. And then you can't peel it down and peel it up anymore. And that uh, makes it a little bit easier to put the card together. I then line up the little tab here so that I can line that up. If I had just folded this over completely and then, um, or to the first corner, I could have lined it up a little easier, but here I just line it up so I see the box. I can show you that in another video, I think. This was just me not realizing that. And then I'm just using my uh, bone folder to push down that little tab to make sure that it's really nicely pushed down. Do a little bit more mitering because it was harder to uh, close it and now it's much easier to open and close that little flap. I, to finish off the uh, inside, I then just layer that pattern paper on top of my white layer and then put that uh, down on the inside so that I get another nice, nice layer panel. And you could leave the card this way. It's clean and simple and it's just beautiful. I did add a little white um, kind of writing space. You could probably write directly on the on the cardstock. However, the cardstock has slightly linen texture. So uh, I thought it was easier to just make a little square. Um, so here I'm kind of figuring out what width I want to have on uh, that little tag. And then I use a My Favorite Things punch. I think it's called a cloud punch uh, to corner, cloud corner pouch, pouch to just make a little bit extra on that uh, label so that now I have some place to write. This could be the end. However, you know me, I like coloring and I like cute little characters. So I decided to stamp up uh, two of these really adorable little characters um, from the unicorn stamp set. I don't remember which unicorn stamp set, but it will be linked in the description down below. And then I'm just going to use a very simple coloring, like super simple. By the way, this is hammer mill cardstock, if you were wondering. I'm using E11 and E21 to make this just soft shading. Uh, all, the whole characters are very, very softly colored because I didn't want them to stand out too much against the very, very soft uh, cardstock. I'm also using um, B000, B quadruple zero. I'm using uh, R01, R00, R triple O, and R quadruple O uh, to color in these images very, very lightly again. Um, it's not meant to have a lot of color. It's not meant to have a lot of shading. It's just simple. If I could have gotten away with it, I probably just would have made one layer. However, I wanted it to have a little bit more. I left the horn on both characters white with just a little bit of a gray tint to make it look a little bit more round. And then I fussy cut out both the little cat and the little corgi, a corgi with both wings and, un and little unicorn horn. You can't go wrong with that. You just can't go wrong with it. They're super adorable.
To finish that off, I'm just using my tape runner to tape it down. I don't want to have any more dimension uh, than the card already has. So I tape down the little unicorn um, corgi on the front side and the unicorn kitty on the inside. Just to make it, well, I, I decided to add a little bit more tape to make sure that it was glued down perfectly. And there is the card. Quite simple. Very simple, actually. To finish it off, I'm going to add some Giardelli squares and a little tip here. Because I've made this box very, box very snug, I am going to use a little bit of washi tape. Just cutting down this little sliver of washi tape and then I tape down those uh, edges. Simply taping them just a little bit and then they fit very, very snug all three of them and I can just close that flap and uh, we have the card done. However, with that card and I was going to send it in the mail, I needed an envelope. So we take another sheet of that beautiful, beautiful 12 by 12 paper that I got from Hobby Lobby, uh, what the, that you saw in my previous haul. And I cut that down to a nine and an eighth by nine and an eighth. Uh, I then score it uh, on my envelope punch board at um, three and three quarters, move it over and score it again at four and three quarters. Now I, I realized when I came there I hadn't done the punches and I really needed the punch. So I went in, lined it back up uh, with the line and then just did the punches. After that, I'm just lining up the little um, scored line with that little uh, kind of pointer thing that the, the envelope <laughs> punch board has um, and just uh, continue all around on all four sides. I know that uh, uh, the uh, We Are Memory Keeper have another punch board. I think it's called one, two, three, and that can make envelopes, envelope boxes and boxes. So I think um, my next uh, investment is going to be in one of those because uh, that envelope uh, punch board is loved. I made hundreds of envelopes on it and it's starting to get slightly dull. So um, I think I'm going to get a new one. Anyhow, uh, to finish off this, after you have burnished all the edges, burnish basically means you using your little um, bone folder and going over, folding the edges and just going over so it's easier to fold together. And then you make tabs. Now I made two different kinds of tabs. Uh, on the side in the bottom, I want, uh, or in the bottom, I want the tabs to go downwards. Uh, so that you can attach them to the bottom flap. On the top, I wanted them to go to the sides because then I kind of can fold in um, the sides to get it to stick a little bit better before I tape down the lid. So that is why I made them differently. You don't have to. And sorry about going out of focus. I think this is the only place it does. Um, something about it going too white focus isn't always the easiest to do. And then I'm going to add some tape uh, on the outside tabs. So I'm, I'm kind of looking, okay, was it this? Yes, it, this was correct tab. Uh, on the side, on the inside of the upper tab and on the outside of the side tabs. This is how I usually add my tape when I do regular envelopes. Next step is to remove all tape and line up the corners. The next corner will look a little bit better. I sorry I was out of, of screen there. Uh, I'm still not like I haven't made videos in about eight months, so I'm a little bit rusty. I am going to round the corners. I didn't round the upper corner because I already put tape there and I didn't want to get tape into my envelope box board. And then I just line up that side to make the envelope. I, I'm trying to get let it be as square as possible so that the upper tab, little mini tabs on the upper uh, flap uh, actually can go in 
to the envelope. So that is how it works. Then you just fold in the flaps um, and then you fold down the big flap and that's the box envelope. This envelope is a little bit um, tight on the sides. However, because it's made for a four and a quarter card, uh, it's a little bit bigger at the top. I actually ended up uh, adding a little bit of a gift at the top to the recipient of this card. And that was all of it. That was the card and everything. I want to thank you so much for watching. Again, all the details are in the description down below. And on my blog, you can get the schema and all of the measurements for everything. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you later. Bye.